Hello and welcome, I'm Tim and this is Tim B at Sea. And we're coming by the Battleship New Jersey, which is usually way up the river. <laughs> anyway, we're going to this ship over here. Let me get you strapped in because things are starting to happen. All right, let's start slowing down a little bit. How about you, Chief? All right, we're getting close. All right, so we're headed up to this red ship up here, and because it looks like to be it's a bulker as opposed to a tanker, and that's probably going to mean the connection is further aft. Usually the tankers have all the connections in the center, which makes it much easier for us. Uh, I've talked about this in other videos, but if you look at the stern of the ship, there's something we, we call the rake of the ship. And that's the rake of the stern there, where it kind of uh, goes from flat and it rounds up there. Oh, phone's ringing here. Hang on a second. Hey, let me call you right back, all right? Thanks. Yeah, my brother's calling me. Nobody ever calls when we're doing nothing. It's always right when we're coming right to the... Right when things are starting to happen. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, the rake of the ship. So the problem is, if I... When we get back there, there's a tendency to want to roll in underneath that rake, and that's uh, really not a good thing. We don't want to do that. So, um, until we know what we're doing, let me secure the radar here. There we go. Um, I'm probably going to land on the flat and then back up. And the flat being the flat part of the ship more in the center. And uh, the reason why I say I secure the radar, um, I don't think it really matters as much with the newer digital radars today, but uh, a lot of the old analog radars really were dangerous at eye level. And so since the ships are up high and our radars are up high, sometimes guys on the ship wouldn't come take your lines if they saw your radar antenna moving around. But I think that's really a, something from a bygone era. I think the safe distance from our radar array right now is something like one or two meters or something like that so I think it's uh, much better than they used to be They've got, everything's gotten a little safer but we're doing 3.2 we're fighting the current which is just what we want we want the current coming at us and that is definitely happening while I'm doing this I'll give you a shot look at this big behemoth <laughs> oh she's a beautiful thing isn't she it's a if you haven't checked out their YouTube channel, it's really, really cool. The uh, curator uh, runs the channel and really kind of gives you some inside insight. You know, really kind of cool things that are going on over there. All right, so I think because I'm fighting the tide, I think I'm going to be able to slow down very quickly. All right, Chief, when you get a chance, let's get those Yokies down. The Yokies are uh, what we call the fenders. Chief, he might be ahead of the house. I saw him go ahead of the house there for a second on the phone. So we're down to 2.7 knots. Here he comes. some sort of uh, communication issue but that's all right the chief will get him straight all 
So right now I'm just uh, still, like I say, I'm pretty confident we'll be able to slow down because there's uh, enough flood tide here opposing us. And still making 2.7, so kind of coming in a little hot, but that's okay. I think, like I say, I think we'll be able to bleed off the speed because of that uh, flood tide. All right, so right about now, I'll take it back down to the shipyard. I wonder what it's doing next. Apparently, they're getting 200 tons of ballast so that they lay flat on the blocks. Talking about the New Jersey there. Okay, so now 2.5 knots. We're just about bows almost in line with the stern of the ship. So I've come all stop. I've put the rudder hard to port. And because I'm all stopped, it's not going to go diving over there. In fact, it's still opening up, which is not really what I want. But actually, you know what? We're falling in all the time. So this is okay. We're down to 2.2, slowing down rather quickly. This is good. So you know what? I'm going to straighten my rudder before I put it in gear again so it doesn't come crashing over to the left. All right, you guys just got past the uh, stern of the ship here. All right. Chief, I'm sure that the connection is very far back, but what I want to do is land on the flat, uh, get a headline, or do whatever we got to do, and roll and come back into position, only so that you know I, we don't get rolled underneath the rake. Okay. All right. So right now the bow is going, coming in. So I've got it hard right, and I'm just putting my port engine ahead and clutch. And this is just we're down to 1.6 knots. So this is to keep us moving. Get, and to get a little bit flatter with the ship. All right, now I'm going to go all stop. I'm going to put the rudder at uh, the midship. And the reason why I'm doing that is because we need to keep moving. We're doing 1.5 knots. I'm putting both engines in gear here. So just as suspected, that flood tide slowed us down plenty. I don't see, oh, there is a man on deck. I was going to say I didn't see a man on deck, so I was taking my time. But I see somebody walking up there. Definitely seems to have found us anyway, so that's a good sign. So I've got two engines in clutch right now. Clutch meaning minimal ahead. All right, our guys are uh, 25 wide up here. 25 wide, understood. When you think that last Yokohama is going to land on flat, let me know. Okay, it's going to be going to be a ways. Uh, the third yoke is just now getting to a front spot. All right, good deal, good deal. Okay, so I've got all stop. We're doing 1.6 ahead. Circling the jersey right now. It might be coming after you. I uh, got that camera pointed at the jersey. I can see it. <laughs> all right, so now I'm going to put the rudder hard right so that I can get the stern over. 20 on the bow. Okay, the, the bow is at 20, and the stern, I want to flatten out a little bit more. So I've clutched ahead on my starboard engine with the rudder hard to starboard, and that's going to hopefully reduce the amount of, that the bow will come out and increase the amount the stern will come in. That's kind of what's happening 15. right now. Down to 15. All right, I'm going to go all stop because we're going to be right about here, I think, is probably where we're going to end up. So now I'm going to put the rudder at least to midship. Well, I've checked the local news. We'll probably uh, get caught on camera again. That's right. Somebody sent me a uh, one of the friends of the channel. Oh, now you see the stern's falling in. Oh, I guess it's not falling in that much. I thought it was falling in a lot. The sun rod on the bow. Got 15 on the stern. I'm backing uh, down right now. 30 feet ahead of your yoke. You should be okay to touch it. All right. Uh, we got a center yoke? Nope, just uh, just two. All right. I'm trying to. Uh, I figure you guys are going to come back. Quite a ways. I'm thinking connections in front of the house. Oh, I see it way back here, but in the back of the house. Uh, he says he can uh, work that hose almost all the way back to the manifold if needed. Oh, that's great. That's outstanding. Yeah, his, uh, the rail for the hose to go on extends all the way back to the front of that uh, house on the port side. All right. 
I just saw a guy come around the stern with a heaving line in his hand, but then he disappeared. But so I think they know that we're here. Okay, you got two foot left. You gonna touch up? All right. So is is this a spot that we could put a bow line up and fall back on, or do you want to come back a little bit more before we put one up? Yeah, either one. All right, here they come. They got a whole crew now. I think uh, I think we're pretty close to the spot. Probably don't have to go back over thirty feet. Um, I'm just looking for a place that we can actually put a line up. The ship doesn't have many. Yeah, Roger that. Okay, so the stern's falling off. So I'm going to put my rudder to the to the starboard. Give a uh, right twist. Unfortunately, that right twist is going to pull the bow out. We don't really want to do that. Okay, 20 feet back to be on the spot. All right, coming 20 feet back. Uh, yeah, you, you want to let us put that line up, then you fall back into it? Yeah, that, no, that's ideal. That's what I thought you were saying. All right, good deal. Good deal. All right, so I'm going to put my rudder amidship again in case the bow starts to fall off. We're all stopped. We're just sitting here. If you get this first line... Uh, back here. Is that going to work for you? Sure. Not ideal, but it's easier just to have everyone get along. Alright, I'm going to put the rudder 10 degrees to starboard and try to pretend that I'm walking. So a loaded barge, so it's not really going to walk, but I think we can lean on it a little bit to keep that stern from opening up. I'm not really understanding why the stern wants to open up so much. The tide, we're opposing the tide, doesn't really make sense but it is what it is. So I can have all my theories I want but the end result is that the stern keeps falling off. Alright, so I'm going to give it about 15 degrees of right wheel now to try to get that stern over there. And I'm really not getting it over there, I'm just uh, holding it in place. All right, now I'm worried because the bow is starting to come off, so I'm going to bring that back to 10 degrees and be in clutch with a right twist. Okay, now the bow is coming out, so I can leave. I can still leave everything the way it is, meaning I'm doing a left twist. The right, the starboard engine is ahead, and the port engine is astern. Bow was coming out, so I just rolled my rudder from right to left. That's bringing the bow over again. Problem is, in doing that, it also brings the stern out. Back a little bit harder now. You guys are working the line up there. Where are we taking off? I don't understand that. Right, there we go. There we go. Alright. She's starting to behave now. Alright. You can see the guys up on deck there working the lines. important when you see these guys doing their job to remember that IMO, the International Maritime Organization. Okay, first line on. Let's start working the stern, please. Coming to stern, 20 feet. The IMO recently voted and passed a minimum wage for mariners, seafarers, and uh, most of those guys on deck are probably making the minimum wage, which turns out to, I believe, $21 a day. So when we talk about things like the Jones Act and that sort of stuff, and you wonder why the U.S. Merchant Marine is so small, um, yeah, there are other, other places that are willing to work for much less. How are we looking, Chief? Uh, he hasn't found me down yet. Hey. 
So I'm just coasting right now, sir. Fifteen. Fifteen. Let's make this off. Let's uh, try to get a battle line because it's going to be impossible for me to hold this up going astern. Okay, check your stern out for me. Checking it up. When he says check it, he doesn't mean take a look at it. Means he's telling me to stop it by checking it up. Checking is what we do with a line. You say check the line. You're not looking at the line. You're stopping the line. It's one of those silly things where nautical things are always... A little different. <laughs> Is that good, Chief? Are you wrapped up? I just got it wrapped up. All right, good deal. Do what you can on the bow, because, uh, like I said, I don't know how long I can hold this. Yeah, I don't know if Gordon can bring that up to a cleat over by the uh, Yoki, but if he did, that would solve all my problems, but it's all right, whatever. Okay, so the bow's falling off, so I'm going to try to... Bring this one up, make it a, a forward spring. Uh, look, he's the barge captain. He's got to figure that out, but uh, that would be perfect for me. Good morning, Luke. So I'm just concerned about that bow falling off. So I've got the rudder just about midship, and I'm doing a left twist. And it looks like that's holding us. Maybe the stern's coming out a little bit. Now he's got that up there, so I can start. All right, Gordon, you cool with me driving ahead into that line? Okay, so you might have to respot again, but for now, drive into that line and... Uh We'll get some other lines up. Cool, you get a bell line up there, and then it will hold us right in place. And you see, the problem that I have is that when the when I get a backing line, there's not I don't have any really the, the, we don't have what they call flanking rudders. So, in other words, when the engines are engaged in reverse, it's pulling water um, away from the rudders. So, the, I don't have any directional stability at all. Uh, I can only move the direction of the water. Uh, in relationship to going forward, you know, uh, when the engines are engaged ahead. So, uh, and when they had two backing lines up together, I knew that it was only a matter of time before I'd start to lose everything. And that's why I had them move that up a cleat. And by doing that, I can drive into it. And now driving into that line, that line will hold the bow over, and I can use the rudders because I'm pushing ahead the water is going over the rudders, and I can move the stern in. So that's how that works. Anywho, let's see where we at. Uh, ooh, buddy. Almost 20 minutes. This will work out good. <laughs> Say good morning. Good morning. <laughs> All right. Well, I got her alongside. Luke's going to break down, and then we got to go back to our dock. Uh, one of the port captains wants to measure something on the boat. And, uh, that's it. So thank you so much for watching. And like Dr. Sal says. And with that, if you enjoyed the video, hey, take a moment, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new videos as they come out. Leave a comment, share it across social media, give it a big thumbs up. It helps the algorithm and it helps get this video out. And if you can, support the page. How do you do that? You hit the super thanks button down below or head on over to Patreon where you can become a monthly and yearly subscriber. <laughs> If you have, if you don't know who Dr. Sal is, he it's Dr. Sal Magliano. He has a what's going on with shipping. I'll put a link in, both up above and in the comments below. Awesome channel. Make sure you check it out. And another awesome channel is SP Paquita. So I'll put a link in for that too. Make sure you check that out. Thank you again for everybody doing all the YouTube stuff. And you guys take care. Be safe. And as always, I'll see you on the watch.